Maryland football won its Big Ten opener. Volleyball topped its opponent in three straight sets and secured its first ever home victory against Michigan. But both men's and women's soccer struggled to grab wins this weekend. We'll fill you in on all of that and more coming up on the left bench. We are shot for, you know, 89 minutes and some change, you know, so we're almost there. A lot of these guys, and including myself, came here to do things that had never been done and happy we crossed another one off the list. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Left Bench brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Alana Munich alongside Alex Gary and now Alex, it only makes sense to start with Maryland football's domination over Michigan State this weekend. I mean, talk about a first conference win in the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, this was one for the books. It's been 73 years since Maryland last beat Michigan State in East Lansing. Terps came into Saturday's matchup determined to end that streak and they did so in dominant fashion. Rather than playing from a 14-point deficit, the Terps struck fast thanks to a bow braid interception on the Spartans' opening drive. Maryland will march down the field and put up six after Talia threw it to a linebacker? Yep, walk-on linebacker Sean Greeley with the catch to put the Terps ahead. They would add to that lead after a 95-yard drive led to a Tyrese Chambers catch in the end zone, his first in a Maryland uniform. The Terps stopped Michigan State from gaining any momentum on offense as the unit converted five turnovers including this Tar Heap still pick that was inches away from being taken all the way. The Terps are now tied for second in FBS in the turnover margin. Octavian Smith Jr.'s house call added to Maryland's lead and ensured a Terps blowout win to end the victory drown East Lansing 31-9. And of course, that wasn't the only game played in conference this weekend. A few other teams opened up Big Ten play as well. So that's why we had to have Andrew McBride here to take us around the Big Ten. Andrew? Yeah, guys, Maryland has had some smooth sailing so far, but we'll have some tough battles coming up, especially against the three other remaining undefeated teams, Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan. The Big Ten saw four in-conference games, three of which were blowouts. Let's start with one of those blowouts in State College, where Penn State's annual whiteout game did not disappoint. For the fourth straight year, over 110,000 in Happy Valley got to go home more than happy. Penn State quarterback Drew Aller threw for four touchdown passes, the Nittany Lion defense forced four turnovers to earn the 31 to nothing shutout over number 24 Iowa. Just another statement win, building Penn State's resume. Over in Ann Arbor, the Wolverines started out slow, but found their swagger with coach Jim Harbaugh, who is back on the sideline after serving a three-game suspension. Michigan dominated on the ground, outrushing the Scarlet Knights 201 yards to just 77. Blake Corum had 97 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. J.J. McCarthy added 214 yards in the air, which proved to be too much for Rutgers. This one was not close, as the Wolverines defend their number two overall ranking, grabbing the 31-7 win. Another Big Ten blowout. But enough with the blowouts, because Minnesota Northwestern had an action-packed game in Evanston. The Gophers started the fourth quarter leading 31-10 before Ben Bryant and the Wildcats scored 21 unanswered points to tie the game on this electrifying 11-yard pass to A.J. Henning with two seconds left sending the game to overtime. After a Minnesota field goal, Bryant found a receiver in the end zone for the fourth time in the game to seal the dramatic comeback and the 37-34 win. We knew Bryant was the real deal after he showed out last year at Cincinnati, and the transfer did not disappoint this weekend. Now, on to Nebraska, who took care of business at home against Louisiana Tech, and Illinois, who took down FAU 23-17. Indiana did not have it as easy, however, as they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Akron in Bloomington. With three minutes and 30 seconds left to go in regulation, Indiana was clinging to a seven-point lead until the zip struck with a 71-yard Lorenzo Lingard touchdown, sending the game to overtime. This one wasn't just one overtime, not two, not three, but four overtimes. Indiana was able to come out on top with a crazy trick play, two-point conversion, and a stop on the next play, sealing the 39-37 victory. Whew, college football overtime rules really do rule. And yet, through all this excitement, the best was saved for last, or even the very last play, in the anticipated top 10 matchup between Ohio State and Notre Dame. The defenses showed up for Ryan Day and Marcus Freeman, as there was not a touchdown on the board until Travion Henderson broke one loose for 61 yards. The Irish never go down without a fight, though, and scored two consecutive touchdowns, giving them the lead. 
with just over a minute left, Kyle McCord marched 65 yards down the field until the final play from scrimmage on the one-yard line. A gutsy run call just three seconds left found Chip Trainum in the end zone for the dramatic win in an instant classic between two powerhouse teams. And guys, you just can't help but feel for Notre Dame, especially when they leave 10 players on the field for the last play. It's difficult to beat a powerhouse team like Ohio State making mistakes like that. Yeah, guys, that Ohio State victory was pretty convincing, but I was a little more convinced by that victory up in Penn State. I mean, Iowa has a legit defense, and they absolutely dismantled them. Drew Allard is legit this season. Okay, Alex, I can see where you're coming from, but I'm still going to have to go with Ohio State. I mean, three seconds left on the clock. Like, can you imagine how Notre Dame felt in that moment? But they weren't the only team to fall this weekend. Maryland men's soccer was on the road this weekend, but couldn't secure the W against Wisconsin, extending the Terps' winless streak to five games. The first 71 minutes of play saw no goals from either team, deadlocked until the Badgers tapped the ball into the net after a deflection that slipped through Lowell's hands. Lowell was then carted off the field and did not return for the remainder of the match. And as per coach Sasha Sarovsky, he will be evaluated on Monday. Maryland's best scoring opportunity came from a foul in Wisconsin's box for a penalty kick. Instead of sending Capetti into the box, who typically takes the kick, Max Riley was given the task. Riley sent the ball far over the top of the goal, handing Maryland its third missed penalty kick of the season. Offensive errors like miss free kicks and off-target crosses cost the Terps the game as they fell to the Badgers 1-0. Maryland and Ohio State both came into Sunday's game looking for their first Big Ten win of the season. And for a while, it looked like neither team was going to get it. The Buckeyes had the upper hand on shots and scoring chances with 25 shots. But Ter Terps goalkeeper Liz Beardley had eight saves to keep the game close. Lisa McIntyre had a strong chance 30 minutes into the game for Maryland. But just like the Terps' other shots, it missed the mark. Ohio State and Maryland traded possessions for the majority of the second half, but both teams remained scoreless. With less than a minute to go, the Buckeyes had a flurry of scoring chances, and it was Kristen Bombeck who found the back of the net to put the Buckeyes in the lead. Maryland fought hard in the last minute, but could not get a last second goal. The Terps lost in heartbreaking fashion, one to nothing. Focus on us. I mean, right now, you know, we, we spoke about in the beginning of the year, I feel like we were like sharp for 30 minutes, right? And then we were sharp for 60 minutes. And now we are sharp for, you know, 89 minutes and some change, you know? So we're almost there. And I think that once again, they we're, we're getting opportunities to continue to, to get better. And we got to continue to use that going forward. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we always talk about it. This one's going to hurt, but we got to be 1 0 after Michigan State. Stay with us because when we come back, we'll sit down with the captains of Maryland field hockey and talk about the team season so far. And we'll also take a look at how field hockey's international presence helps elevate the program. Don't go anywhere. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. I tell my son, I love you every single day. I love you. Now, my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally, it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. I tell my... Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Got a new house. It's looking pretty cool so far. A place that I call home. I'm teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. It only takes a spark to make a fire start. Thank you. Let's study, please. I think I finally found 
a place to make my own, a place that I call home, and this place that I call home. Hello and welcome back to the Left Bench presented by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Alex Gary, joined alongside Alana Mutnik. And Alana, after a 3-0 sweep in the FGCU Classic last week, Terps kind of struggled in their Big Ten opener against Purdue last Friday. That's right, Alex, but they did third turn things around in their match on Sunday against Michigan. Maryland Volleyball grabbed win number 11 this season against Michigan, and Sam Sire was one of those reasons why. The Terps found themselves with a commanding lead up 20-15 to in the first set after a 6 to nothing run led by, you guessed it, Sam Sire. Sire finished with 15 kills and 7 digs on the day. The second set was plain and simple, Maryland domination. Accurate serving for Maryland and 19 attack errors for Michigan gave the Terps the 25-12 win in the second set. The third and final set was the closest of the day, but Maryland brought out the brooms, taking the, this set 25-21 and sweeping the Wolverines. Maryland improves to 11-3 and, and will head to Rutgers on Wednesday. Here's head coach Adam Hughes with more. So I thought the team did a really good job just staying composed and um, you know, I told them afterwards really proud because uh, it's the first time we've beaten Michigan at home and um, you know a lot of these guys and including myself came here to do things that had never been done and happy we crossed another one off the list. A win over the sixth ranked team in the country and then they had a 10 day break until their game on Thursday against number seven Rutgers. We're excited to welcome on Maryland Field Hockey's team captains Rain Wright and Moro Verlick. Raina Moore, thanks so much for joining us. Now, back in, back in August, Missy named you two captains of this team. Through non-conference play, how do you think you guys have adapted to this leadership role? Um, I think for me personally, it was something that I definitely had to grow into and learn throughout this past couple games. But... Um, having a partner like Mo with me um, has been amazing and just having a team who's super close they always let me know if I need anything to change or if I need to add things into a play or speak to Missy about different things but um, definitely growing every day. I totally agree I wouldn't want to do this with anyone else I think having to do this with Rain made it so easy for me to transition into a big role like this um, so yeah it's been going really good so far. Awesome. So after losing to Princeton last week from a last minute goal, the team was handed their second loss of the season. So can you guys just talk about your ability to bounce back after a loss and what the mentality was leading up to the game against Virginia? Um, losses like this um, are tough, especially for instance with losing in like the last minute or so, but um, it's early in the season and you can't win every game. Yes, it's possible, but you learn from these things and it's so much easier and so much better to learn from some stuff like this and move and implement it into our next games. But I wouldn't say that it brought us down at all. It actually built us up, got us a little bit more angry for the next couple of games, especially moving into conference play. So we're excited to take on Rutgers and possibly break that nine and no streak. The best games we've played this season. So I think that really motivated us in our game. Um, against Virginia because we showed that we can play really good hockey together and I think we have still a lot to learn and we can grow as a team. Now defensively you guys dominated against a top 10 team in UVA not letting them have any scoring opportunities until the last second of the first quarter. How are you preparing to match that energy against another top team in Rutgers? Um, I think we've always had a very strong defensive unit and defensive mindset so it's kind of a part of our culture now at this point. Um, but continuing that grit and that that force of moving all of our energy from the back to the front and just keeping that communication from the back to the front to keep the game growing and the ball moving, um, I think we're going to bring that every game no matter what. Now, wrap up here, how have you guys taken this break to prepare for the opening of Big Ten play against Rutgers on Thursday? Um, I think it's nice that we had a 10-day break. It's given us lots of time to like prepare for uh, our Big Ten play. It's nice because we got some time to watch some film, look at the mistakes we've made, but also look at the good things we've done and the things we've learned so far. So I think it's really helped us to get um, ready for the game against Penn State.
I agree. It's a kind of like an odd opportunity to have because we really haven't had a long break like this in the middle of the start of our season and beginning conference play. So I think this is pretty crucial to just keep building and a good building piece on just our technical skills and working on us as Maryland for the next upcoming half of the season. Rain and Moore, thank you guys again so much for joining us today and good luck on the rest of your season. Thank you. Thanks again, guys. And like we just talked about, Maryland field hockey beat then number six Virginia two to one. Junior Hannibal sniped a shot past the Cavaliers for Maryland's first top ten win of the season. Boss is one of four international players for the Terps, and Mora, who we also just talked to, is also. Eddie Culkins has more on the impact that the international players have on the team. The nice thing for the University of Maryland is that we recruit the very, very highest American player and so that they are absolutely paralleled with the internationals. But then you get that little touch of difference in the flavor of how the game is played because they're very indigenous to their style. And that's what I love. I love seeing a young Dutch girl or a young German player or a young English student athlete come over here and be able to be in this breath of real diverse hockey. Maura Verleg, Hannah Boss, Natalie Fichter, Erica Morris Adams, all these ladies with international roots. Mara, Hannah, and Natalie from the Netherlands, Erica from England. Actually, when you're new, it's just nice to have some of the Dutch girls and you can talk your own language for a little bit after a game or something like that, which just can sometimes relieve some pressure or just like feel nice to be talking your own language. Everyone knows that the Dutch is the best at field hockey, so I think having those three here just makes the level here really great and fun. And especially in England, like when I used to play for England, we always used to be scared of the Dutchies and because they have like the best skills and everything. For head coach Missy Maharg, recruiting for these international stars becomes a balancing act with top American talent. Big kind of thing out there. Well, you know, are we not giving you know opportunity to to our to our young Americans? And I say this: um, Maryland's got the very best young Americans here, and um, it's just an opportunity to have a, uh, to accent them with with you know high level teammates from around the world. But it doesn't get any easier than Hannah Boss's recruitment. Recent Maryland icon BB Donrad bringing Boss's talent to Maryland. BB came over for dinner one night and told me all about Maryland. Um, I was actually already thinking about an adventure abroad and when she told me about her adventures, how much fun she had, how much she learned about herself, not only about field hockey, um, Marilyn really spoke to me. But for now, these ladies face some of the top college talent in the world, part of their decision for becoming a Terp. I chose Marilyn because it's a really good school and it's like we're always a top 10 team, which is so exciting and I love competing on a high level, so that was something that was very important for me. For Terrapin Sports Central, I'm Eddie Culkins. Yeah, Alana, it's great to see how sports is kind of making a, a global world and where these players are able to play at the highest level halfway across the globe. Espe yes, exactly, and especially with Maryland field hockey having all these international roots now, it really can only help them improve. So now don't go anywhere because when we come back, Alex and I are moving to Studio B, playing a game we like to call, Who's That Terp? And as always, we'll crown our Pro Terp, Terp of the Week, and Top 5 Plays. Stay with us. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you.
Welcome back to The Left Bench, presented by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Alana Mutnik, as always, joined by Alex Gary, and we needed a little change of scenery to play one of our favorite games, Who's That Terp? And Alex, you're going down. Yeah, all right. Uh, we'll have to see about that one, but just a little refresher of this game. One of the producers has picked out some coach or some player and zoomed in on a part of them that will flash on the monitor here. We're going to have to guess who it is. So, Alana, are you ready to lose? Let's do this thing. All right. All okay. right. First thing that I see is it's a, a headset. headset. It's a headset. So that's got to that's got to mean football, and it's a coach. It's it's a coach, and the bald, reflective head. You know, Kevin Willard's not on the sidelines of the football game, so I think I, I think I know who this is. It's a. Okay, let's do it. My my guess would have to be Coach Locks. I'm gonna have to agree with you on this one. Okay. There we go. We're one for one. All right. All right. That is. Golden Forty. Oh. Oh. I have not brushed up on my numbers. It is a volleyball uniform, but. I don't think it's Sam Sire. No. I. I honestly don't know. I'm honestly, terrible I'm with gonna go with Sam Sire. I'm going to go with Sam Sire. You know what? Crazy, crazy game you. this weekend. I'm going to go with Sam Sire. I trust you. There okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Sam Sire is. Two for two. We'll see. We'll see this next one. Um, I mean, So this it's is, the brown eyeball. <laughs> this, is, this is an interesting one. I mean... I, I mean, I, I think it's field hockey. I don't think it's field hockey. I think it is basketball. I want to say, just because of this like thin strap. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. This is Sean. I, you know what? I guess I need to brush up on never the Sean's one. face a little more. You know, we'll see seeing him a lot this year. So, all right. Two for three so far. Okay. That's, I'm okay. still liking it. Last we got one, two last right. One, last one. We got to end on a high note. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, so, I don't see anything. I, don't, I see maybe hair in that oh, corner. Oh, yeah. I guess that's hair. Oh. Green. Okay. Green. All right. I'm kind of drawn to the thing over there. You see like a red, white, and blue It's like a terp alumni that now plays for a different team possibly because I mean that is maybe maybe but Alex I'm gonna let you take the reins <laughs> on this one I have no idea what sport to even start guessing with this one all right we're, we're receiving a hint because this is a uh, not an athlete or, or a coach Not a coach, not an athlete. Okay. Someone on the. They go, they to, go to Maryland. Uh, is this. I have no clue. Uh, not, not, a, not a coach, not. Uh, I'm inclined to think like me. Is it one of us? Oh, I oh knew it! Oh, I knew it! God. I knew it! Brandon Schwartzberg. It's this is our editor in chief. TSC's this is this own Brandon Schwartzberg. Oh. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a great one. Man, that. Ended it with a bang. I, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get that for myself, but you know what, Brandon? Brandon, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't even care that I didn't get it. That just was the perfect end to finish per our game. Perfect end to this game. Yeah. And I guess. Uh, to, uh, I guess that was the time we have for Who's That Terp? Alana, this might be my favorite game we play on the left bench. I, it's great. I honestly agree with you. It is so great. But do you know who else was great this past weekend? This week's Terp of the Week, and that's Bo Braid. Let's stay right here and break it down. The defense was stellar in Maryland's first game of Big Ten Conference play against Michigan State. Coming in hot after missing the Virginia game, Braid made his first interception of the season on the first drive of the game, which helped lead to a Maryland score to take the lead. The Terps forced five total turnovers to go along with three sacks, and Braid led the defense with 10 tackles on top of his pick. 
Congrats to Bo on being our Terp of the Week. Now this week's Pro Terp brought the fire to Game 1 of the WNBA Semifinals versus New York Liberty. It's Connecticut's, Connecticut Sun star Alyssa Thomas. Thomas was tasked with a difficult assignment entering the game. Stop MVP candidate Brianna Stewart. And she did just that. When Thomas was Stewart's primary defender, she went 0 from 8 from 3 and 7 for 25 from the field. Along with her stellar defensive play, she knocked 8 points, 7 rebounds, and 10 assists en route to an upset victory in Game 1. Congrats to Alyssa on being named our Terp Pro Terp. All right, Alex, I know you've been waiting all summer for this, so let's get to our top plays. Let's get it started. And starting at number five, we have Tarheeb still with a heat-seeking interception. I mean, he put himself, he read Noah Kim perfectly, put himself right in the perfect position. And man, if he kept that in bounds, he was going to end up in the end zone. I know, and now we have Liz Beardsley's diving save. Look at that. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Oh my God, she went absolutely flying. And we go back to football to see this. Sean Greeley linebacker touchdown. Once again, crazy play call for the first touchdown of the game. Greeley with his first touchdown, fifth year walk on. What a performance and what a play. And we couldn't just pick one of Beardsley's shots because look at that one. That is an incredible save again and we just had to include both. And of course for number one we could only go with Lily Gunter and Sam Sires kill. This was the game, this was the play that won Maryland the game, three sets against Michigan. What a play and what a what a hit by Sire. What a play for Maryland volleyball. And all right, that'll do it for this edition of the Left Bench. Kira Bruno and Ricky Podgorski will be back at the desk to have you covered for next week. Be sure to keep up with all of Terrapin Sports Central's coverage on X, Instagram, YouTube, and online at terrapinsportscentral.com. See you next time.